Hi, my name is Barry Crampton. Today I'm going to show you around our Porsche Cayman. Then I'll take you for a ride in it, but first I'll tell you a little bit more about it. It's a 2.9987 two-door, 2009 on a 59 plate, has done 19,612 miles at the moment, but I'm out for a drive in it, so we'll have done more. The MOT is until the 1st of the 9th, 2022. The fuel economy, urban, 20.5 miles per gallon, extra urban, 40.9 miles per gallon, and combined is 27.2 miles per gallon. Has a 0 to 60 time of 5.8 seconds, a top speed of 165 miles per hour, out of a 265 brake horsepower, 24 valve, six cylinder engine. As you can see today, it's uh, not a very nice day. It's absolutely lashing down and I'm soaked. But uh, let's, uh, let's get on with this. I'll just tell you the service history. So 26th of the 8th, and this is all stamped up in a proper book, not a digital service history. 26th of the 8th, 2011, at 5,548 miles at Porsche Centre Kendall. 15th of the 10th, 2013, at 9,737 miles, Porsche Centre Kendall. 22nd of the 12th, 2015, at 13,565 miles, Porsche Centre Newcastle. 17th of the 7th, 2020, at 18,067 miles, at Porsche Centre Kendall again. So, uh, proper service history. Um, blimey, I've just put my big cup in here, so it's really difficult to short. Well, it's just close it again right let's uh, let's go I think today's video is going to be a nightmare um, not just because of the rain the hopefully the audio quality will be all right but um, there was a, a Mac operating system update in the last couple of days and uh, since that's updated my microphones won't download so uh, I'm having to download it them on an old computer with the old operating system to get the uh, to get the sound. Um, let's uh, let's see if it works. You'll you'll soon know anyway. Right, so just having to be careful. It's quite a low car, and these are quite big potholes on the car park here, and the big uh, like speed ramp exit. I'm not sure why. They've made such a big ramp there. I can't see a thing. It's an awful day. Not the sort of day that you want to be driving a rear wheel drive Porsche. This is definitely Range Rover weather. Proper, proper sports car, manual box. Just a nice, precise gear change. It's a height and reach adjustable steering wheel. Just make sure, yeah, I have got my lights on. Electrically adjustable door mirrors. The, the rake of the seat is electrically adjustable. There's a height adjuster which is manual, pump up, and there's also a manual adjustment. That The road there is terrible, the tractors like roughed it up during the uh, go very very distant memory now but I think we had one really hot day and the tarmac had melted and the tractors ripped it up going into that field as I say hard hard to believe now <laughs> this is more like a British summer's day so as I say more like a proper sports car this to me you know, no, no iPads, proper switches, nothing to distract you. You, the car, and the, the road. The steering's brilliant on Porsches. I've had several of Boxsters myself. I prefer the shape of this to the Boxster. And, uh, but the, the drive to me is pretty much the same. It's kind of the same view out to the front. It's only the back that's different. We've got the little spoiler at the back which comes up I think at 75 miles an hour 
or you can put it up with this little switch here. We've got aircon, the heating's good, got to say, and as I say, I am I'm absolutely drenched. <laughs> got uh, airbags in the, the door cart here. Good looking car. That's, uh, reversing sensors on the back. It's I, I some stage I do need to just put my foot down a little bit when we get a nice stretch of straight straight road that uh, just just to hear the engine noise because it's it's fantastic. I think did it say 265 brake horsepower? Now this is a 2.9. I had a, a three point brand new 3.2 550 anniversary back in the day in 2004 and I think the, the ordinary one was something like 264 brake horsepower and they squeezed another two <laughs> brake horsepower out of the... I could be wrong, it's, it's a long time ago but they squeezed a little bit more brake horsepower and, and dropped it 10 millimetres but it had this awesome sports exhaust on it and you just drove everywhere well I just drove everywhere at 4000 revs because it just sounded fantastic this is you know regular viewers is certain death corner. Nearly got taken out by a, a big van the other day. I wonder how long it'll be before we have satellite navigation where the satellites are looking down on your road and you can see what's coming round the corner. Listen that engine. So nice, nice gear change, nice clutch. Love the cabin, nice and simple. Got contrast stitching. All looks good. It's just reminiscent to a, a proper sports car back in the day. I'm thinking MGB GT. <laughs> And everybody would be going, no! <laughs> but I like them. God, I like them. Especially the V8 one. Although, I did nearly come to grief in one uh, one day. We, we had a black MGP GT in. And uh, I, any excuse to go out in it... Um, and of course it wasn't taxed, so I'd got the trade plates on and the trade plates were stuck in the window and I was going around this corner and like, like Sterling Moss and uh, the trade plate slid across the dashboard and while I was on, while the steering wheel was locked over it came between the, the dashboard and the steering wheel and locked the steering wheel at, at a a 45 degree position which meant that I was coming out of the bend but I couldn't turn the steering wheel back anyway the MGB GT had very very good brakes and I did manage to stop before I went in a duck pond and uh, I've been rather more careful ever since this so I'm, I'm these days I'm not too keen on sports cars it's I, I, I knew my sports cars days were gone when I, I did my back in and an old lady had to help me out my Porsche at the side of the road because I couldn't get out <laughs> anyway oh here we go into second right that's fast enough you get the idea on the motorway on the, the way up, I, I joined from the slip road and it just sounded absolutely flipping glorious. Looks like it might have uh, stopped raining a bit actually. 
unfortunately it's too late now. Got to get back to the garage, finish this test drive. So the outside look round won't be my usual. Didn't want to ruin my cameras. Uh, I did. I did try it with an umbrella. I have a little umbrella to go over my camera, but it was also rather windy out there as well on the on the top, so it was nearly blowing my tripod over. We'll see where this guy's going. No, I know you're all right. Don't worry, I'll slow down. Proper handbrake as well. Little armrest. Lots, oh, quite a lot of room in the in the front. Um, the frunk. Oh, oh, under the under the bonnet. Big camera bag in there. I've got a tripod. <laughs> two coats that are absolutely sodden so there's plenty of room there and you can also get stuff on the back seat here there's a parcel net as well to stop everything shooting forward when you uh, when you brake it's just lovely it's, as I say the steering I'm not going to go mad because that would be stupid But even so, you can we've got what? Let me see. Sorry, we've got indicators on the left, wipers on the right. Your lights are over here. Side and headlights. Knock that away. You put your main beams on. You've got here a little function stalk. The information display in the centre there. It's telling me the actual my digital speed, which is far preferable on a Porsche than the, the silly clock there. That's obviously, Porsche aren't making enough money to cater for us British. And you, the increments go up in 25 miles an hour. So you're kind of guessing where 30 is all the time. Um, and, and the same with 70, whereas with the digital speedo, there's, there's no ambiguity. It's 30 or 70, so I, I do like that in the centre. Left hand side you've got your speed, sorry, the left hand side you've got your odometer and your trip counter. The right hand side you've got your fuel gauge, coolant temperature gauge and then your clock and outside air temperature which is surprising today because I think that says 11.5 degrees and it feels a, a heck of a lot colder but then your information display in the centre. From here, if I click up like so, so that's average 21 miles per hour. Well, I've been sat in a car park video in it. 23.9 miles per gallon again. It's been sat there for an hour ticking over, so that's come down a bit. So knock that forward. You've got audio there. Audio, no CD. That well, there was a CD in, but it was absolutely awful. Oil, measure oil level, limit. So you can set your current miles per hour to to limit it. Um, we don't want to do that. So we'll go down and go back. Info, messages, service, look service. Service in 17,200 miles or 373 days. So these, 
roads like this, when I'm a boxer, I used to go up to the Lake District every, well, I used to have Thursdays off, and go up the Lake District every Thursday for a drive. And they are just lovely. This, this feels like a, a proper driver's car. Like uh, Tom Hartley Jr. said in one of his, his videos, the modern day cars and with, with all the gadgets on, you've got to drive them too fast to get any sort of thrill or enjoyment out of them. But I still think this, even though you, you know, you, it stops you from doing anything suicidal, it's still a very, very nice feel to it. Nice feel through the steering wheel. Looks good. I don't, I, well, I'm not sure whether they call it Guards Red anymore. They probably don't. But uh, that used to be a, a 911 in Guards Red and you'd made it. I'll, I'll try and remember to cut a photograph of me in my younger days. Was it POW 226? Anyway, I'll, I'll cut it in. But we also had a 911 Targa, which air cooled. It was just beautiful. It does make you want to drive too fast, but. It is very enjoyable, you know. I've got a funny feeling he wasn't going to stop anyway, but. The thoughts there. Bacon Butty guy's not there, sadly. Can just trough one. Wow. <laughs> That's a kind of, um, <laughs> it looks like Fred Flintstone's camper van. The proper door on the back. Still, they're out getting some fresh air, that's that's the main thing. Everything good on the car. No uh, no rattles. One of the things you tend to get with the older Boxsters is that the hood's creaking a little bit. The arms at the back that put the roof up, they, they sometimes creak a little bit. The hard top, I prefer the hard top. No flexing. Well, I think we've got Kestrel and Merlin.
think it was slightly bigger than the Kestrel. So here we are, absolutely beautiful car. Got a company car, you want to enjoy your weekends off. I was just watching, um, I was watching a video about the North Coast uh, 500 and there's a few Porsches going up there. Um, I've got to say that, uh, that does look like fun. But anyway, that's the car, it's, it's beautiful. Uh, I can't fault it in any way. Very, very nice and clean. And just a, just a proper sports car, it's, lo it's lovely. Thanks for watching, I'll see you in the next video.